Hello there, Dr. Sheep here. Welcome back to RG Jeff Talks, episode 15 something. I'm your host, Dr. Sheep, joined by my guest today, Rondo. Hello, everyone. All right, let's uh, roll the intro here, and uh, I'll be right back. <laughs> Alrighty, and we're back. Okay, so the reason why we're having Rondo on today is because he was at a conference. Did not you? You did you speak at the conference or wait? Which conference was this? I had a conference, and then I also had a departmental um, proposal. I also had to speak at. Okay. So yeah, I uh, talked at a uh, conference covering Midwest uh, deer issues. So were 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 you trying to get funding, or what were you trying to do? Um, no, uh, it was more just kind of talking about the research being done by UND in North Dakota, and. Um, kind of what we're doing with the project and how it could be useful in the future for wildlife managers dealing with deer. I see. Yeah, it was pretty good, both of them. Okay. So was this the one up in Theodore, or is that that later still? Yeah, no, that, that was the conference at um, Medora, North Dakota, Med- just um, outside the Theodore roosevelt national park it's very pretty up there um we saw some elk um some deer coyotes pronghorn so a lot of wildlife and pretty good hunting trails okay yeah so okay so what did you see anything there that you thought was interesting like Going out, or like you talking about presentation wise? Presentation wise, um, one that stuck out to me was a I forget who ran it if it was North Dakota or a different state, but it was a infrared survey that they did. Okay, so basically, they wanted to get a better estimate of an elk population, so they bought out um, a company that does high scale infrared. And they go around in a plane at low levels and get a pretty accurate representation of how many elk are in an area. So it's pretty high def infrared. So that was kind of cool to see see what videos and how many elk were in um, North Dakota. So is that the best? I guess did they find that was more precise than the traditional ways of measuring elk populations? Yeah, I think that they were pretty happy with the numbers they got and how accurate it was. Were there... I think the... Go ahead. I was going to say the big thing I think that um, why it may not be done yearly is because it is expensive because you're, you're paying to use the equipment as well as a professional to also run the equipment. So yeah. it would probably be a every couple year thing if they wanted to look at it. Although I feel they, like they looked at it because the uh, people were curious on the actual number of elk in the state. Hmm. I feel like if your if your entire thing, like let's say you have a department, right, that wants to do mm-hmm. that wants to study populations of any warm blooded animals for that matter, I feel yeah. like you would just. I mean, the helicopter, I guess, is probably the most expensive part, but I would just have the thermal imaging equipment on hand at all times and just have either a grad student trained or I don't know, hire somebody to train. And then you could constantly be doing this all the time. Of course, helicopters are not cheap and neither is the fuel for said helicopters. Neither is the maintenance, uh, on said helicopters or the store said helicopters. So maybe, maybe it's not feasible. Yeah. I don't know if it's the exact tech, like, exact uh, um, way that Perret is run that has to be ran through that company or what they do, but um, yeah, you have to run it through certain companies to get that uh, large-scale survey done. 
Although, I wonder if you couldn't do it with, with... I wonder in the next few years if a drone would be a more economical solution. Because any grad student can drive... He'll fly a drone. Yeah, I, that is one thing that they've been doing on lower scale surveys for animals. Right. But I suppose this is a much larger survey. Yeah, so um, for the elk, they had to cover pretty large region around a uh, mountain. So mm. they used a uh, plane because it was a lot more oh, easier plane. to cover that's, the area. That's that's just as bad as a helicopter, if not worse. Yeah, no, it was a plane. It was pretty... Um, it was pre I don't know how much it costs. I forgot to ask, but... I'm sure a lot. Expensive. Yeah, planes are not... Yeah. And then feeling the plane and all that. It's not a it's not a cheap endeavor by any means, by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, no, especially when you're talking about state funding and stuff. So. Right. So so the so the elk survey, did they did they find more or less elk than was expected? Uh found more elk. Um, more elk. Okay. Yeah, it's actually, uh, they were looking at a place called Turtle Mountain. <laughs> so, um, it's about, um, two hours from Grand Forks, so. There's a mountain two Canada hours from Grand Forks? I feel like this is a hill. I don't know, I've never been there. It's right next to Canada, though. Hmm. hmm. So I'll have okay. to go check it out sometime. I was going to, but, uh, the snow beat me. Yeah, you guys ran out of, uh, fall real quick. Yeah, it kind of just skipped over fall went to 70s to 30s. Yeah, we're uh, we're experiencing some cold weather right now. It's not too enjoyable. Yeah, we just got another inch, I think, today. Another inch? Okay, we, we, we got a dusting the other night. That was it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's actual. It was pretty heavy for like two hours. Good God. So you're already so you're already you're already being driven to work now or are you still using your bike? Sorry, can you say that one more time? Are you driving to work? You're still using your bike? Oh no, I stopped using my bike. It's pitch black. I can't ride it in the morning. Oh please. Rooster used to do it all the time. <laughs> yeah. Uh it's a little a little bit slicker here. <laughs> That man would go oh. out and pitch black and he'd survive. He probably would. He's very resourceful. Mm-hmm. I suppose that's true. Maybe you're not as resourceful <laughs> as him. Just listen to your arc training. Arc training, yeah. That's that's what was going on then arc was training. Kill, go kill a go kill a Ovis for uh for warmth. Yeah, you always did like the sheep. Of course. <laughs> I, 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 I. Back, back to the elk, the the, the 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 trick sheep of Ark. So okay, so they found more elk, like statistically significantly more elk, or like within the error bars of the previous studies. Um. So I think it was a significant number. Uh, I don't know. It was probably a couple hundred more than they thought, honestly. That's probably outside the error bars the previous study, I feel like. Yeah. So, I don't know what they ran their last study on for elk. They didn't really talk about it. But what? I think it was like a thousand about around this mountain. Well, you can't just... Oh, wow. Okay. If it was a thousand before, and now they found a couple hundred more. Uh, no, this study found a thousand. Oh. So, that's even better. That means they had like eight hundred before, and now they found a thousand. Yeah, so that's definitely outside the error bar range. Mm-hmm. Although, so, see that this is one study. They need to do this year after year after year to, uh, and at different times of the year to account for migrational patterns, and you know climate change uh well yeah climate and weather patterns but yeah it's um it can't do that yeah especially when you're doing a plane you gotta do it i forget what time period they did but they can't do it midwinter nah that's just that's just because the pile's a wuss sure 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 <laughs> 
pilot doesn't want to crash in the wilderness and die. What a wuss. Be a man. They do fly pretty low. I'm pretty sure they had to contact landowners before. What a wuss. Be a man. Fly closer to the freaking ground. Just like the bush pilots of y'all of, of Alaska. You, they can do it. Trust me. Huh. Those those yeah. motherfuckers, they fly right over polar bear infested glaciers and forests. They don't give two craps. You know. Something like that. Polar bear's a little bit worse than a freaking uh, elk. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Or a moose. Of course, you're going to see moose up in Alaska, too, so. Yeah, they were talking, I think there's about 40 moose in North Dakota. 40 moose? That's, yeah. wow. There are, wow, that is not very many. No, it's mostly a random, random couple that will go through the prairie. Mm. They stay in the forest, then? Uh, the moose? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're mostly up more in Canada, but. Okay, so then you don't come down. I wonder how many moose... Aren't there moose in... I think I've seen a moose. I thought I saw a moose in Colorado. Maybe I'm managing things. You can. There's moose in Colorado. I was going to say, I thought I saw a moose in Colorado. That's as far south as they'll go. They'll go Colorado, uh, Rockies, uh, then they'll go up through Wyoming all the way up to Canada. And then back to America. Gosh darn it. Keep dropping my coins. Anyways. Father. Okay, okay, okay. So, alright. Elk study. Is there anything else they found with the elk study? <clears throat> um, they did a couple just going over how bow hunting impacts um, firearms in North Dakota. So that was one. Talking about how the bow hunters like to go out a couple weeks of the year before the firearms, and then they go to the Theodore Roosevelt Development Park and like to hunt for mule deer there. So that was kind of interesting to see their survey on that. Isn't that what? So they can legally go hunt in Theodore? Um, yeah. So there's like certain areas that they can. I think it's like just outside. I don't know if it's technically exactly right in the park, ah. but the general area. I was going to say, like, I feel land. like that defeats the purpose of the park. <clears throat> yeah, but, um, yeah, there's a lot of land that's around it, so. Right. So, okay, what was, so, what did you give your paper on? What did you, uh, you're, you're studying genes. Have you, did you say you found any genes, or what? Did mm -hmm. you... Yeah, so, um, we're just getting our first data back, but. It was looking at EHD and CWD and looking at two genes that could affect those diseases. Okay. Did you get did people ask you questions and stuff or no? Uh, at the conference, no one asked questions, but at the department meeting, I got some questions. Yeah. Well, just because everybody knows you, that's a little. Dis did anybody ask questions at the elk study or no? Ask questions about the elk study. Well, yeah, I feel like I've thought the whole point of these like conferences is like you would you go there so you show off what you're working on for your research, and then people ask questions about it and they answer said questions after they give their presentation. Is that not how this works? Yeah, or? we're expecting questions, but um, so our study probably dives a little more into genetics than most uh, wildlife people know, so. Oh. It probably was more that. Plus, we didn't have any data yet, so it's kind of mm. early stage. Oh, so they were just like, Psh, just look at these kids over here. They don't have any data. But they were also yeah, just we, like, um, what's a gene? I don't know what a gene <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of change up for them. They did all like they said. You did good work and stuff after, but um, yeah, I think it was tough for them to. Uh, kind of incorporate into some of the state reports and stuff that they were going over so it's kind of a different tone so i i feel like though they should be i feel like they should be on the watch though because i feel like gene studies of wildlife is going to become a more predominant it's going to become a very large thing in the future as gene technology in improves 
I feel like we're going to be wanting to study the genes of animals more and more and more. It's going to become a part of these other like wildlife studies. Yeah, so actually Upper Midwest is one of the few places where there's a lack of study on white-tailed deer and mule deer, genetically speaking. Really? Yep, so the East Coast and West Coast have done a lot more studies overall on both of them. So We're behind yeah, the times. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting to look at a map and see all the different studies that have been you're, done across the You're states. leading the charge here, sir. Uh, I don't know about that, but yeah. Um, so I added EHD to my uh, project a couple months ago. EHT, what is... EHD. Oh, uh, PhD. Episodic hemorrhagic disease. No, episodic hemorrhagic disease. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. That was an E. And the second time you said that, I heard P. I'm like, what? No, you're good. Sorry, my throat's just a little dry. Bro, take a, take a gulp. Take a drink. So. But, yeah, so they added that. It was looking at a new gene out of Illinois that could affect EHD susceptibility. I see. Oh, wow. So our Illinois populations. Okay. Yeah, so we're kind of looking to see if that's in North Dakota and if it plays a role. And So that's what you're looking for. That's on your goals? Yep. So that's the one covering EHD. And then CWD, it's looking for a slow progression gene. Hmm. Okay. Do you think you will find it? So I guess if you do find the e the EHP or EHD or whatever the heck it is, if yeah. you do find said gene, are you going to be interested in doing a follow-up? Or will you give this over to somebody who's studying? Uh, or I guess if you were to say go for a PhD, would you partner with somebody who uh, specializes in migrational patterns of deer? Yes, um, that's a good question. I'm curious to see if we'll find it first. But, uh, yeah, whoever does do it, if it's me or someone else, would have to do it through North Dakota and then probably just take uh, migrational studies and incorporate that into it. I can't imagine deer migrating that far. That's a long ways. Yeah, it is. Um especially when you incorporate a bunch of different stuff, it would probably be like over a long, long period that right. it would have been um, spread across, not like it's just a single deer. Right. But, um, yeah, I'll be curious to see if it's any of the populations. I think Illinois gets EHD a lot worse than here, so I'll mm. be curious to see if it's here. Do the deer... So, I guess... Do we know how farming affects deer migrational patterns, if deer migrate at all? Because I feel like in the summertime, when there's a plethora of food, I just, I just feel like, I mean, not even the summertime, but I just feel like more now, I feel like deer just don't need to go somewhere unless the snow gets deep, you know. Because that's the same thing with the cattle. We, 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 the cows can stay out mm -hmm. in the stocks basically until it's time to calve. Some places just leave them out there basically all winter. Uh, but if the snow gets too deep, we have to go feed them or we decide just to bring them back in general, so, which is always interesting. Do you think deer follow the same thing? I guess they probably just die then, a lot of them. Yeah, so they know for a fact that farmland, the deer move differently. As far as the winter part, it's the exact same thing where if the snow gets deep, they will come into, like, towns or farms to find food. Mm. Well, didn't you say you saw a lot of deer uh, up in Grand Forks in the winter Cause all, when the snow got too deep? Yep, exactly. By um, March, they were all in the city pretty much coming in at night to get food. Right, right. I thought that's what you had said. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting to look at how different barriers and stuff affect uh, deer movement, such as rivers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not like they're going to be uh, crossing on the, the, the inner, the, one of the roads, one of the bridges on the, <laughs> over the, was it the Red River, right? Up there? Yep, Red River, and then out west is 
to the Missouri, which is pretty much what separates Western North Dakota to the east. Right. Yeah, I can't imagine deer trying to uh, cork up and... What is it called? An Oregon Trail. What the heck do they call when they when they cross a river? Ooh, I have no idea. There's a name for it. I can't remember the name, though, unfortunately. I do not know. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it'll be interesting to take a look and see where those genes, if they are there, where they're at in North Dakota, and if they're isolated barriers or not. Right. So that'll be kind of what we're looking at. Hmm. Trying to think here. Hmm. Okay, so so at the department meeting, did, what kind of questions did they ask about your study? Um. So there was one covering, asking what types of flies uh, cause the EHD. Oh, so is North that Dakota. is that a transmission? We look at flies that can transmit this. Uh, so for EHD, it is a viral disease caused by biting midges. So yeah, that's what causes it. Interesting. Okay. So they asked what fly, what species? Yeah, it was like a Cudiolis. Um, I forget the exact one I had to find, but yeah. So basically for EHD, uh, there's a lot worse outbreaks when there's drought. Because the deer kind of group up to find water, and that's exactly where the biting midges are at, because they like warm, stale water. Right, so, right. Increases so, outbreaks that year. I could imagine if that's how that works. Yeah, and um, can the it's a lot more fatal in white-tailed deer compared to mule deer, like uh, like probably ten to one or something like that. Yeah, it's pretty white -tailed high. White-tailed deer, they're they're wussy deer, you know. Huh. Yeah, they do die pretty easy. Yeah. They're, they're a worthless animal. Huh. Worthless? I don't know about that. I wouldn't say worthless, but they're they're a weak <laughs> animal. Yeah, they are, they are sometimes stupid. <laughs> That's an understatement. Um, yes, yeah, so that was one question. What else was there? Um, they asked about if we were looking for a potential variation that affects EHD and CWD, which we would be. Uh, we just don't know if there is one. Right, because you're trying to discover these things. Yeah, so that would be cool to find, but um, that's pretty much a silver bullet that probably doesn't exist. Hmm. So, um, yeah, those were the main ones. I guess so. How many more are? are is it, how close are you being done with your study? I mean, because you you said because next year's your last year up in North Dakota. Yep. Yeah. So I got one more year, and then um, we had to send off another batch of samples that we're working on right now. Get that back in the spring, and then I'll start writing up my final uh, defense. Yuck. Yeah, it's uh, going to be a lot of work, but it should be worth it. And then you'll get your master's, and you'll be graduated. Yes, sir. And then what? That is a good question. You don't know yet. That's uh, okay. I don't. Um, so either do a job at a state, uh, more research, or a PhD. Mm. So... One of those many options I have to figure out. So many things, so so little, t so many things to do. Yeah, it's uh, it's a lot to do in a year, but um, <laughs> yeah, I'm liking the project. So, hmm. Did okay, so you got to go to Theodore then afterwards. Was it was it snowing by that point? No, this was um, right in the middle of fall. It was really beautiful out. It was like 75 the whole time. 
Okay. Oh, 75. Wow. All right. That's probably warmer than it was here. <laughs> yeah. What was... What, 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 is, what is Theodore? Because, like, you know, all, all the all the national parks I've been to thus far, or at least the ones that I can remember anyways, mm. the six of the eight that I can remember, there's a theme, right? So Rocky Mountains is the mountains, you know. There's meadows, yeah. there's the, the high-up tundra, uh, and then there's – so then you have – Black Canyon, which is the canyon. It's literally just the canyon. You know, yeah. Deep Canyon. Okay, that's the defining feature. Okay. Then there's... Uh, is it? Mesa Verde, which is obviously the, the, the Mesa itself. But then the... Uh, the, the ruins. I can't... The ruins. The, the, the cave uh, ones are upside down. What? The ones like in the actual canyon. Yeah, the, why can't I think of the heck they're called? They have a name, anyways. Um, <laughs> I keep thinking petroglyphs, but yes, there were petroglyphs, but it wasn't the main reason, anyways. And then there was great sand dunes. Obviously, it was the sand dunes and some of the mountains, but you know, mountains a mountain, whatever. Hmm. Uh, the and then there's petrified forest. I don't think I need to go much further than that. <laughs> it's the wood. You're there for yeah. rocks. And then the last one, by the the actually I was there before as a national park, is the the Gateway Arch in St. Louis. So the arch, it's a man made. That's, arch, a, which that's is a, a national little, park now. Yeah, that's odd. The dumbest national park because all the other national parks because like three there's like a there's a gorge in like what, Virginia's one of the new ones I don't remember what it's mm. called but there's a big all the picture pictures have this bridge going over it uh well the the national park is supposed to be the area underneath the bridge but everyone takes a picture of the bridge so obviously whatever is underneath the bridge is not that remarkable but. Uh. In the case of the arch, it's literally the arch because it's. I've been there. Underneath is just concrete and grass. <laughs> Exciting. And maybe a part of the river, but like the river has been completely terraformed and stuff. It you know. Yeah. Trying to preserve where Lewis and Clark landed there is or started their journey is kind of mute. So. Yeah. So. Um, what's the theme there? What is Theodore Roosevelt National Park? Because I kind of I get the vibe that it's just like wilderness. Uh, it's uh, it's pretty much just the Badlands. They're very rugged. But I thought it was like forests and stuff. I mean, no, it's it's like the Badlands. Oh, like like it's part of the Badlands, so it's very rugged. Get some high mountain, not mountains, but more like bluffs and hills. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty open. Well, really, a lack of trees, uh, but very rugged. Uh, we are in the more not as rugged area in the south unit, but I heard the north unit's very rugged. Um, so a lot of pretty sights, but you can just see forever. I could imagine. Huh. That's yeah. It was pretty interesting. You'd see uh like bison on top of like not mountains, but very large bluffs or hills, like, miles out. It was pretty incredible to see. That's not what I was... Ex so it's just Badlands National Park, but... Yeah, here, smaller, I can I think. send you some pictures to see if, if you agree with me. Interesting. But, um, yeah, it was... Uh, I really enjoyed hiking there when we had some free moments in between the conference. Okay. How? But yeah, very pretty. Um, did you get yourself a map? A map? Yeah, because so I've got... Phil got me into this. And I, so, so he actually... I got into it after the sand dunes. And I, I didn't get a map for the sand dunes because the sand dunes don't really have trails. You just walk into the sand dunes and that's it. Uh, no, yeah. I've got... I've got maps. So uh, at some point in my life, I'll have to get one from the sand dunes. But... Wow, I am uh, just... I'm making a mess here. Yeah, no, I don't have a uh, map of it, but well, I did send you some pictures. So. Well, don't worry. When we go, uh, well, well, we'll discuss that in a moment. But yeah, there's Black Canyon of the Gunnison. 
Rocky Mountain, Mesa Verde, and Petrified Forest. There's no, there's a, those are not in order. All good parks. Yeah. But, you know, me, I'm, I'm a map guy. Mm -hmm. well, I have duplicate Iowa maps because I bought this one, but it kind of defeated the purpose of the other maps. The, I bought the Missouri one, but you know, I got my free South Dakota map, my free Nebraska map. Actually, it's out of date now because the governor has changed. The little rickets on the back. <laughs> got my Iowa one, my uh, Minnesota one, my North Dakota one. And the Missouri one. I don't have a lot. I've been to 20 states, and I have, like, six maps. So, not doing a very good job. But they're hard to get. They're they're not... when what we Because you have to be on the interstate, and you have to be in the, just the right part of the interstate to get one. And it's a whole thing. And, okay, okay. Let's very look at tricky. This. 14 chances. This is not what I was expecting. Yeah, this this reminds me of when I was in Albuquerque. Yeah, it is. Um, just recently. Yeah, pretty open. No kidding. Huh. Well, I'll be damned. Which I guess brings up to my next thing. When do you want me to come visit? I'm, like, trying to plan my summer <laughs> and, like, days off so uh, uh yeah i will need to look i don't think i have any conferences scheduled but because you guys wanted me up in june and that's the, and the issue is june is june is difficult june is very difficult because i thought i had said oh. the text at one point uh, uh date range uh, oh it was memorial day i had mentioned memorial day memorial yeah, weekend i'm sure you did i've uh, just uh been doing all the conferences and stuff. Right. So, because I, I had proposed Memorial Weekend, but the problem with Memorial Weekend is because didn't we want to go to Theodore Roosevelt my next trip? Wasn't that the plan? I think that was an option, yeah, if you wanted to. Yeah. We'd have to, we'd probably end up staying out there, I would assume. Uh, yeah, they have a little town we can stay in. Right, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, we'll have to figure out a time though. Time? I will have to. Memorial Weekend would be busy to go to the National Park, but I feel like Theodore's kind of out there. I don't know how many people really. But I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, we I think we showed up there two weeks after everything had closed and it was perfect. Oh, yeah. Well, I, so I don't know. I mean, obviously, up there, it's it's a lot cool. I, I, although, I don't know about the Badlands, but I feel like it's cooler up there a bit longer than it is here. So, like, you know, even if you wait towards end of June. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'd probably be high 70s by then, maybe. Right, which I don't know. I wouldn't be awful. Yeah, it'd be it'd pretty nice here in the summer. But I think my big problem with the end of June was because I think my Cali trip, we don't want to go Memorial Day weekend because we could still get caught up in bad weather up in the mountains. Unlikely, but it is still a possibility. Mm. So you got to go middle of June. Uh, but then obviously now I'm taking a week off coming back. <laughs> I'm taking like two straight weeks off to go on trips. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Which would be insane. I don't think they would let me do that. But I have the P I have the PTO now. PTO. The P oh, yeah, pay time off. Yeah. I have the PTO to do it now. I'm sure they just love that. That's the funny thing. I could take two weeks straight now. Just be gone for two weeks straight. <laughs> I have eighty hours built up, so it's like it's not very nice. It's not even like, <laughs> so I'm not even worried. I don't, I don't even know what I'm going to, it was the funny thing, because it was the funniest thing, right? <laughs> My coworker even told me, because I was planning a, a, I've got a trip in April the, next year, and she's like, you take so much time off, and I'm like, 
Ma'am, no, I don't. I have two weeks of PTO still. I, it's the end of the year. <laughs> no, I do not yeah, take that much time off. But, use it or lose it. Yeah, exactly. But see, a lot of time when I'm planning days off, I plan them around holidays. And so I get mm. an extra day in there. That's how you do Save you some time. Well, save you some driving time at least. What will? Driving time. <laughs> Like you get an extra day where you can drive. Oh. Oh. Well, no. Well, see, a lot of times we plan around my lockout where my company requires me to take nine days off straight. Mm. Eight, nine days straight off. So it's like. And also, I. True. I mean, this maybe this year I'll take even longer breaks. I tried to take a 10 day this year. I, I took a 10 day last year. I, I should have taken, I want to show I could have taken a 10 day this year, but boss was like, nope. She had a day off right before I left. It's uh, a bummer. But that's why I got to figure this out now. Cause she was just like, doc, you're, you're, when I told her I got, I wanted to get April. She was just like, doc, that's half a year away. Do not be concerned about it. I'm like, yeah, but if I'm not mistaken, when I was trying October, I remember my weekend for the eclipse. There were like everybody wanted that weekend off. Mm -hmm. Granted, that was fall break, but there's a reason I took that off way back beginning of this year. I know yep. it, you know, it seems silly, but there's a reason. And it's also why I'm like trying to get all this stuff planned now because June is a very big hot month. For trips, so it's like you know everybody in the branch goes in June, so it's like trying to take that time. Yeah, it's always better to do it early. Yeah, like ask for it off early. Yep. So, but I oh, think, yeah, well. but I think if we do it Memorial Day, which is I think the twenty seventh, right? I could not tell you. Oh, Google. Memorial Day 2024. Yep, May 27th. Exactly as I suspected. X. This would work great. Because if you guys are okay with me coming up then, I'll come around that weekend. Or it could be... Uh, no, I don't... Maybe I could do the following weekend. I, I don't know. I'll have to ask the boss. I don't remember if she said... I think she said the next weekend was the busy one. Maybe it was June 1st. I don't remember. I'll have to ask her. But I can either... I can do either one of those weekends. Okay. And then I'll go on my trip to Cali uh, when she gets back from her vacation. So I leave like the 17th or something like that. Or, you know, I might start, start it on the 15th of June be back on like the 25th or 24th mm. and then i'm just like i'm i'm big tripped out for the year I've, i got my north dakota trip out of the way i got the solar eclipse out of the way i got my cali trip out of the way and then phil wants to go up to michigan for like a weekend or something super silly like that because a he Sounds doesn't want to on our way up to maine sometime at the end of the decade uh he doesn't want to uh have to make a detour into Michigan. He wants to have Michigan done and dusted. So that's not a problem. Which is fair enough. I think yeah. we're also gonna I think I think this whole plan is like Michigan, Indiana, Wisconsin, and maybe Minnesota, but I think our trip for twenty twenty five is he wants to drive up we're going to we're going to Washington, but we're going to take the long way there. We're going to go up through up into up through Min not through Minnesota, but up to Minnesota, North Dakota. He's never been up there, and then cut across Montana all the way out to Washington. It will probably have to be the western part of Washington and not the eastern part. That would take forever. Luckily, I'm going to see the Pacific Ocean this year. 
So there you go. We're gonna hit up Idaho, Oregon, and California. So that will be fun. Who? who yeah, I gotta. I gotta be. Yeah, I, we had we've had challenges at work because I'm doing all this. I cannot read the map behind me. I, I cannot. It's illegible from this distance. <laughs> But we have we had a thing at work where I was like, "Could you fill in every? St- could you, if I gave you a blank U.S. map, can you fill in every state?" Like, is it outlined, or do you have to draw the shapes? Ah, uh, no, outlined. I could probably do shapes too. To if be it was outlined, I could do it. If it was shapes, I'd probably forget one at least. I could do. Oh my god! I got to give myself a challenge now. That sounds exciting. I'll have to do that at work tomorrow. God, there you go. Wouldn't that be... I feel like I'd screw up some of the borders, though. Especially... Because I would just start with Washington. Then Oregon, Cali. Then Nevada. Idaho, Montana. Kind of work my way through. And then just kind of go in strips. And then Wisconsin, Michigan. Those will be easy. Illinois might be difficult. And Indiana. Problem is Kentucky and Virginia. West Virginia, Ohio. And then, yeah, I might screw up like where Rhode Island and Massachusetts are. Because Massachusetts is a jank shape. Like, those are all jank. Right? Yeah, Connecticut, that area. Yeah, those jank. They're, they lay out jankly. You gotta remember, like, so like, there's a there are a block of f- three states because you have yeah you have New England area Massachusetts tough. that does this, and then you've got Connecticut and then Rhode Island. Mm-hmm. What well, what's above them? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how well those things. Oh, ugh. Well. We'll have to look forward to it, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Let me know. Talk to talk to uh, a badass bitch. See yep. what she says. I sure will. See if I will let you know if the f- if I can do the first. I can, uh, the boss. She said she wanted to take. I can't remember what weekend she needed off. I cannot remember what days and week and. One it off. I don't think it's the first though. So I can either do that weekend or I can do uh, the previous weekend. Yeah, we'll have to talk about it. 27th. Yeah, talk to her. Anyways, that is the end of the podcast, my friends. I would like to thank you all for watching. Please like, comment, share, and. Wow, it's only 43 minutes, so that was longer. And, uh, and good night.